Welcome to BitLab Academy daily live stream. Whether it's morning, noon, night, wherever you're at, all around the world, throw it in chat right now where you're tuned in from. We're happy to have you here. My name is Kelly Kellum. Thank you for being here with part of the BitLab community. If this is your first time, I can guarantee you this is not going to be your only time. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, you know, even with the, we get strong pushes to the upside in the market. And then we get a, a couple hundred drop down to the downside and people think the world's coming to an end. But the people that have a strategy, the people that have a plan, the people that zoom out, look at the four-year cycle and are patient and not held hostage by their emotions, they can see an opportunity like this setting up for a larger run in the future. Even if we were to drop another thousand or even 2000 from here, that still wouldn't mark the end for Bitcoin. I will argue, and I'm sure our guest, we have such a special guest on today. I would argue, and I'm sure you would argue as well, uh, that we are setting up for not the continued opportunity of a lifetime for those that are uh, courageously able to take that first step. And then after you take that first step, when you start to arm yourself with data and understanding and the fundamentals of this market, you realize that the only courage it took was just from not understanding the data. Had you understood the data, you would see that there is no better opportunity in the world. So let's talk about that today. Before we dive into that, I want to say, uh, make sure you're hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, dinging that bell. Uh, throw a one in chat if everything's good with audio and video. Let me know how you're feeling. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Are you? Did you capitulate out from the small pullback? Or are you buying this dip? Let us know in chat. Uh, also, if you're watching this later, you can comment down below. We, we go through all the comments and really try to uh, take heed of what people are talking about, what they're doing, so we can form content that's best for you. Now, before we go any further, I just want to do, I just want to shout out that we got this right here. Make sure you come over here to the BitLab Academy uh, uh, Twitter page, which is here at Academy BitLab. Retweet this post. This is a daily post from today. Remember, every Friday we draw, we do a random drawing of uh, each day of the week, whatever day of the week that is, and we do we do a random name draw. And in order to win, you've got to like BitLab Academy as well as retweet this post, and you're going to be entered to win uh, some really great stuff. And uh, the guest... The guest we have coming on today is the man himself, Mr. Didi Taihutu. This is his Twitter page. Make sure you come and follow him, which is D-I-D-I-T-A-I-H-U-T-T-U. And I'll only, I'm only spelling it out specifically because he's such an acclaimed and wonderful uh, person and voice and personality and point of wisdom in the space. He, I mean, he, myself as well, but people like him, there's so many impersonator accounts out there. Make sure you go and follow the correct person because uh, he puts out a lot of great content. He's got a great YouTube show here also at the Bitcoin family. So without any further ado, I'm going to throw it straight over to him. Mr. Didi Taihutu, how you doing? How you feeling? Thank you for being here, my friend. Thank you for inviting me. Hi, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to the show, Kelly. Um, uh, honored to be here. We've been talking so long, man. We already last year in Spain, we had a beautiful, uh, I think it was a Twitter voices or something, conversation. Uh, yeah. Really cool thing. Uh, yeah, been traveling. I'm doing amazing. Uh, just arrived back in Portugal. Uh, just settling in again here. The sun is shining and the weather is hot. So uh, nothing wrong here. <laughs> so so for anybody that doesn't know you yet, I'll just give a, I'll give a, a really brief sort of rundown. So... And he, you're going to really appreciate his his views in the market because he's been in the market longer than most people. There's few, there's a very small portion of people that are in the market right now that have been in since 2013 or before that. And, you know, but some people still ask today, have I missed the boat? And even himself, who's been in since 2013, I'm positive he would absolutely say no you have not missed the boat but he definitely took a very courageous step back in 2013 uh you know he, he re uh, received a lot of sort of attention because he convinced him and his family sat i don't want to say he convinced them but he, him and his family sat down and they discussed the prospects of bitcoin and the opportunity that lied there within and the oppressive nature of the banking system and central banks and government and uh, financial slavery that we're all living in and they sold every asset they owned and they moved everything they had into Bitcoin back in 2013. And he's been forging a life that is fully, fully decentralized. Uh, and so he's got a he's got a great uh, presence in his own YouTube and Twitter, uh, uh, basically online presence. But he's got a great deal of wisdom of understanding markets, understanding trading. He's a, he's got some really great systems and some great stuff. So I don't want to I don't want to dominate the conversation here. I want to throw it to you. <laughs> How are, you to blush. <laughs> How are you feeling about these markets right now? 
Um, and I love these markets. These markets, there's, there's always two moments in the Bitcoin markets that I really love. And that's always the bull market top and like the bear market bottom. <laughs> these yeah. these markets, booms make you happy. People should be happy at the bear market bottom because that's the moment that you buy back your Bitcoins. And then at the top, you're exchanging them again. And I'm not selling them to Euro for all the people directly bombing in, in this chat. Uh, we don't have bank accounts ready for seven years. Uh, we don't have any option to sell to Euro. I will never sell into a shit coin. And in my opinion, the Euro and the dollar or the biggest shit coins out there. So I will always uh, exchange to stable coins. Uh, the question is, uh, will we still have a stable coin that's back to the US dollar in two years time when we will have the bull run top in 2035? Probably not. It will be a new stable coin back to a new world reserve currency. Um, you know, it's it's just amazing. We, to, to correct your story a little bit, in 2013, I started mining Bitcoin and I started uh, mining also a shit of Dogecoin. And in 2016, um, you know, we went all in. So I sold my house, my companies, my cars, the kids' toys, the clothes, the shoes. And then we went all in. The Bitcoin price at that moment was still between $800 and $1,500 somewhere. Um, uh, and we just understood that all in is the only way. Like, um, why be in an asset that is uh, always uh, undergoing inflation and making you every year a little bit more poor and poor and poor, so you have less buying power, while you can be in an asset that is deflationary and that just makes you richer every year. You know, I, I spend less Bitcoins every year on my normal life. So we calculated it. I started higher economics and the calculation was very simple. And we said, okay, we just liquidate everything we own, all the materialistic stuff, which didn't make us that happy at all. Um, it, we thought it did, but it didn't. And we just use Bitcoin and, and that will increase in value. It will be volatile, but you know, on average it will only pump up um, all the way to maybe a million dollar in 2030. Uh, we are right on track. I'm, I'm very happy man sitting here. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, yeah, I believe it. So, uh, with that being said, do you, uh, you said you don't have bank accounts. Do you, do you just, uh, use a tool that I think, and, and I, I hate to say it, we as humans, we're so like where we're at right now with this day and age in technology and the amount of data and information available at our fingertips at any given time, we forget that even the most, I won't call it basic, but one of the most useful tools that all of us have. If you're watching this stream, anybody, I'm calling you all out. I'm calling myself out. We all have access to Google, Yahoo, Bing, search engine. And sometimes we can't figure out how to do something, and so we stop. Well, I will, I will say right now, we need to stop doing that. I'm going to say it. We need to stop doing that shit. We need to stand on our own two feet, and if we can't figure something out, just start with Google and ask the question. You will find a variety of resources. I don't care what it is. And in this case, you said you don't have a bank account. Uh, so people say that, you know, they argue Bitcoin and the, the crypto lifestyle is not viable because you can't use it to buy anything. So what are you doing right now? If you don't have a bank account, do you just go on something like Google and uh, and find uh, locations <laughs> and places? And like, how, how are you how are you navigating without a bank account? I, th I think the people that are shouting that Bitcoin can't be used to pay anything, they just um, have never lived the Bitcoin standard. It's just people that are in it to be, uh, become rich and make money, but they just don't understand that um, you can live off Bitcoin. Um, you know, I've been doing it for now seven years with a wife and three daughters. Now, even with a small dog, we have been traveling over 42 countries. I don't have a bank account. You know, of course, there's a step, uh, there are steps in between that we started using after a couple of years of traveling, like the Bitcoin debit cards you know, crypto.com or top, there's many of them. So we use them now and then, but most of it is already possible by just a direct payment. You know, I can book my houses, my flights, everything directly with Bitcoin. You know, you can um, you can buy everything online directly already with Bitcoin. It's not that difficult anymore. In the beginning, it was difficult. And now in the end, it's getting very simple. And um, also to get back to that question, it's, it's for me, it's the game to try to spend as much as Bitcoin directly, but when not possible, we as a family just treat Bitcoin as a store of capital and a store of value capital, which means everything is in Bitcoin. That doesn't mean that when I go to Thailand, I won't do an OTC deal and sell, sell a little bit of Bitcoin for Thai baht cash and then use the Thai baht cash to live there. But when I go away from Thailand and fly back to Portugal, I will exchange those Thai bots back into Bitcoin. That's my... Um, core capital. So for me, it's it's still unbelievable that people are discussing that's not possible to fully live all in on Bitcoin. Um, one way you can consider that as your core capital and that is where you store your value and the other way you can already spend it like all over the world, man. It's like, it's it's getting so easy, you know, and this country is adapting it. Like in Mexico, I was last year 
for five months, like in Playa del Carmen. There's more than 20 shops accepting Bitcoin, restaurants, everything. It's like you just need to search with it. And, and, you know, your maybe the hate for the governments and the central banks need to, so, need to be so big that you are willing to spend a little bit more time to spend your Bitcoins and create a beautiful future for your children by doing so. Because if you don't do this and you keep ha- running that hamster wheel and being a sheep and like saying, meh, 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 <laughs> and every time using the fucking banking system, uh, as long you use their currency, they are in full control. The only way to escape the full control of the government and any centralized entity is to use our currency. Bitcoin is created to take the power back to the people. So if you're a Bitcoiner out there and a tweet for a keyboard warrior, then fuck up your bank account, withdraw everything that you can, make them fall and just use the Bitcoin standard. That's why we invented it, to take the power back to the people. Bitcoin is more for me than just money. It's a revolution, a peaceful revolution that makes it possible um, for a... Political, political idea like peaceful anarchy to exist. And um, I think blockchain and Bitcoin are the tools that we missed till now, but now we're here sitting on this beautiful YouTube show with you and I'm talking too much again. <laughs> no, no, I'm happy. I'm happy to listen as much as, as much as possible. I, I talk on here about a hour and a half every day. So uh, it, it, I, I jump at the chance to, as much as I know, I've talked about this on the show as well, as much as I, let me put it this way, as much as I think I know, you know, I'm, I'm coming up on 40 now. And the closer that the, every day I get past the age of 30, I realize how much I don't know while I'm also knowing more, which is weird. You know, as you get older, yeah. you realize more and more. So I know a lot more than the average person about crypto, but I jump at the, any, oppor- any opportunity to just tune in to somebody else, to listen to somebody else's viewpoint, to uh, somebody that's, uh, you know, basically uh, further along their journey so I can learn as well. And I want to shout out everybody that's here in chat right now. All of you that are here watching this BitLab stream or any of the the Bitcoin family uh, uh, channel uh, followers, Didi's followers, if any of you all are here, I mean, really, I want to congratulate you uh, for your own self-empowerment, for for tuning in. And even if you haven't bought Bitcoin yet, just by the fact that you're showing interest, you are a millennium ahead of the majority of the world. So with that, you know what? I watched an interview I did the other day and I said, with that being said too many times, so I'm not going to say that anymore. Um, (laughs) So I I do want to let everybody know, we are going to talk a a little bit, but we're going to talk about some of the concepts and thoughts on uh, uh, Bitcoin and uh, this, but we are going to be diving into some charts. We are going to be looking at some stuff uh, because this uh, DD's got some great setups. Uh, He really has got a good look at the market and we're going to be looking at some macro stuff and we'll tune into stuff uh some local local stuff as well and at the end of the show uh when uh when it's just uh when it's just uh, me on here again we'll 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 do some other uh, ta as well but i wanted to ask your thoughts on did you catch or do you completely ignore because you're full bitcoin lifestyle did you catch any of the clips or probably not the whole thing but any of the clips of the gary gensler uh con- congressional speaking yesterday because there was a couple that you know what if, if anything it's made me more bullish on Bitcoin and the crypto ecosystem, digital asset ecosystem as a whole, because it was wonderful to see, even if it wasn't all of Congress, it was wonderful to see Tom Emmer and uh, Representative Donalds completely taking Gary Gensler to task. I mean, just yeah. shutting him down. Yeah. Do you feel like there's a corner being turned a little bit, uh, uh, at least in the yeah. U.S. or other governments? <laughs> Yeah, of course, man. This guy is, is going to lose his job. This is not possible that this guy continues his job, man. The guy is re- yeah, sorry, I don't know in the US, I think you're not allowed to say retarded anymore, but the guy is retarded, man. Come on. You have disrupted the whole monetary system. You're making uh, America not great again. You're making it terrible to be there as a technology company uh, that wants to build um, a beautiful country by building beautiful technologies. And uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's his problem. You know, he admitted, I never owned Bitcoin. I, I, he did. He taught some classes about blockchain and Bitcoin on the, on college. He never owned it. How the fuck can you like decide about something if you never tried it or owned it? You know, it's like um, I don't know what is going on in the U.S. I find it really uh, difficult um, to understand that a country as beautiful and big as the U.S is destroying everything they ever had. And it's with the TikTok law and it's now with the securities and all that stuff. Why would they do this? It's like, it's it's so stupid. It's like they are even, you know, I have seen really stupid governments all over the world, but I have never seen a government that is selling their Bitcoins for US dollars. 
why the fuck would they be selling their Bitcoins if they can print the dollars for free? They can print the dollars. There is no need to sell the Bitcoins. You can just print them out of thin air. You don't need extra dollars. You need extra Bitcoins. So they are making big mistakes out there. And it, it, it sometimes feels like it's this group of elites, including Gary Gensler, that is uh, forcing the government to sell the Bitcoins, but selling them to their friends, you know, to the rich friends. Like, let's sell the Bitcoins and OTC deals, but to our rich people. So uh, we, as the government, uh, are doing our stuff, but at least our friends become richer. And again, they pay the next campaign for our president to run for presidency and all that stuff like like i think there is a big game going on but this guy was really slaughtered yesterday i saw i i just he couldn't speak anymore he didn't even know what to say anymore it's it, you can't i've detweeted like last last week if you look at the people that now are still in the united states they are all above 100 they're all almost dead <laughs> How can they steer a country? It's like they, they don't, they are not with their brain anymore in this dimension that we are now building up this yeah. new economy. It's like, it's this is, sorry, but I, well, it's well, like you know, really stupid. You know, <laughs> like with Gary Gensler, what, what I find interesting about it is I think it's a perfect exposition of, like it's a lens on the corruptive uh, nature of the fiat uh, capitalist society. Now, I don't have a problem with capitalism. In fact, especially being somebody that's buying and trading and investing, I thrive in capitalism. However, the the fact that it is a centralized uh, ecosystem with you know the fiat government dollars uh, backed by guns, not by gold, um, I think it's a perfect exposition of this because I do actually think Gary Gensler has a good understanding and knows about Bitcoin and crypto. I think that what's happened here is that once he got into government, it's a perfect lens on the fact of how people are bought and paid for. So he did know, because you could see talks when he was like, I mean, even there was a clip yesterday, uh, the day after he, you know, uh, was labeling Algorand as a security, and he was talking about it, you know, two years ago, three years ago, about how great Algorand was, and you could build Uber on top of it. Uh, it's it, it, and so I mean it, 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 things are just bought and paid for. The central banks, you know, they try to say Bitcoin has no value. If it has no value, why are you running scared? It has every value that you don't. It actually has values. That's the difference. Yeah, but it's like it's 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 a very old game that always has been played. And um, the retail investors, people like you, me, and the normal family members that we all know, they are not allowed to be able to become rich. So they can't enter these new markets of trades. That's why they can't enter themselves in the stock market. You mostly they need it through through a the, the centralized entity like a bank or something. Um, so uh, or a fund. Um, and in Bitcoin, they don't want people to have direct access to coins that can make them millionaire in a day because then they will become millionaire and the millionaire doesn't live to the live to the Bitcoin uh, to the standards of the government anymore. So they are just uh, pulling down the people and having access to an open economy when it comes to trading and multiplying their capital. And that's the only thing that they are doing. And, and I don't even understand why that would be possible if we all know that we are going to live in a decentralized way in the future. Um, then finance should decentralize as well. And people should have their own responsibility, but also the opportunities to, to, to um, you make gains in the way they want in a decentralized way without any centralized faith or taking up taking up pampering of people you know it's like that's that's the only reason we can we can make a huge talk about it the only reason is you need to stay poor because that's the only way that you listen and do your job and pay taxes mm. and that's the only way we can run a country yeah you know i think i think uh, I, I agree with all that and i think the most i think i don't want to call it bullish because it this is it's silly to think of national security threat as being bullish <laughs> i think one of the pivotal things that's actually going to influence positive regulation, at least in the Western world, in this case, I'm speaking primarily about the U.S., is a fact of exactly what you just said. U.S. is selling Bitcoin at a bottom. Like, they, I mean, let's talk about let's talk about our, our trade deficit. Let's talk about our unbalanced <laughs> books. And then we're then we're selling at a clear market cycle bottom. Do, do none yeah. of them own even something, even a free trading view account where you can just zoom out on a chart and go, maybe we should uh, sell, you know, China, you know, I hate to say it. China, they're banning Bitcoin at the top and then allowing Bitcoin at the bottom. Like they're trying to sculpt their citizens into a healthy market, uh, you know, uh, 
healthy, healthy market behavior in a way. And the fact that uh, China and uh, the Eastern world, uh, the Eastern part of the world is, is starting to pump liquidity into their systems and allowing Bitcoin and digital assets and the U.S. is not. I think the national security impl impl uh, implications and our inability to uh, keep pace uh, on that level, I think will probably have a bigger impact on getting regulation moving forward than, you know, allowing the freedom of uh, the freedom of, of finance, you know, which is which is a bizarre thing. But with that being said, uh, you know, yeah. I said it, you know, hold on. OK, so. Yeah. <laughs> The beautiful, you know, the, the, the difficult part, just sorry I, I interrupt you, Kelly, but the difficult part for me as a Bitcoin person from 2013 that went into Bitcoin um, as a revolution to disrupt the centralized system and disrupt the monetary system is that, yes, I understand we need to give in a little bit as a community, but like even making the SEC or making Gary Gensler or making all these people important, that's not Bitcoin. We can do whatever the fuck we want. This is a decentralized economy that we are building. We shouldn't even bother what they all are saying and all are wanting. It's like the US is, is, is grabbed by the balls. It's like, oh, all tied up. But like the rest of the world, man, I'm doing OTC deals up to a million in Mexico, in Thailand. All of the world, Bitcoin is accepted. All of the world, you live a free life. All of the world, people are still uh, fighting for that, you know, that revolution. We are going to overthrow the monetary system because they have not treated us right. The bailout of the banks in 2008, nine, there, that is what happened. And they, we don't want to see that again. And it's happening again. And we all applaud this idiot being on a, on a screen and not wanting to say that Ethereum is a security. And I'm like, why the fuck do we even pay attention to these people? That is not Bitcoin. Yeah. That is exact why we built Bitcoin against those people. But that's maybe I'm too old and to revolutionary um, thoughtful person in this industry at the moment, because I understand that the new people in this industry um, are in it for different reasons, which I also fully respect to be very clear, of course. Well, well you know, I mean, one of the biggest uh, plagues of, of humanity is our ability to not realize, I mean, we have an inability to realize cognitive dissonance, one, but then two, you know, the, 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 the need for familiarity. You know, uh, I grew up in America, and uh, I moved a lot every year growing up. And so I was always at a new school. And so I grew, I grew a very uh, extroverted personality. I walk up, I could walk up to anybody, introduce myself. I can create a new circle. And if I move to a new town in a week, I have a new friend circle, all this. When I moved to uh, Thailand uh, back in 2014, 2015, uh, I remember I had a really hard time, really hard time meeting people because because the U.S. is very, you just walk up to somebody, say hi, and it's like you're welcomed. And the rest of the world, people are so, and this is how, how the world kind of is. It's like people are accustomed to needing familiarity before they do something. And, and whether it's a new friend, whether it's, uh, in, in this case, Bitcoin and crypto, you know, you ask people, they say they don't understand Bitcoin. Or they, they say they don't understand crypto. It scares them. I, you know, I, I bring up the argument, tell me how, tell me how your debit card works. Well, I don't know. Well, why do you use it then if you don't know how it works? Because you're familiar with it. So I think I think one of the things that Bitcoin really has going for it, and the, I don't know if you saw the thumbnail for today before it went live, but the thumbnail today is a massive Bitcoin, ma massive bullish shutup. So Bitcoin's pulling back a little bit. Cool. Okay. But we're looking at the macro. We are setting up. One, we have time on our side now because for those that do need familiarization, we have a decade plus of just pure uptime, pure adoption, uh, you know, hash rate going up, uh, basically up and to the right with small dips along the way, uh, you know, decentralization growing throughout the world. We're over 17,000 nodes now. Uh, and so these pullbacks that we've seen are on some sort of four year cycle, whether it's a whether it's a having, whether it's a global liquidity cycles, it doesn't matter what it is. We can see that there's a clear four year cycle. And if we yeah. know that and we've had a, about a year, which is about what the, the uh, bear cycle is, and we know we can look at on chain metrics, whether it's long term holder, realized price. Or, we have all the metrics we, we see that we are clearly setting up for uh, some sort of bullish push. And even if we get a pullback before the halving. That's just for me another opportunity. How how are you playing this right now? Are you still accumulating? Or are you kind of on the sidelines just doing content? No, no, I'm, I'm accumulating accumulating daily. Of course, you know there's always an income that, that that I have created because I invested also in projects and those projects, they, you know, as everybody knows, pay you in tokens. These tokens are being exchanged into Bitcoin every day. 
Um, you know, when we hit 16K bottom, um, I was there in my YouTube video telling us we will uh, never go to 12K. This is the bottom. We will never go. This is a 74% drop from the top. That's just in line with all the bear market drops that we had made in the four previous cycles. So my first drop, you know, was um, a massive drop from 1200 to $200. That was in 2013 to 2014, uh, 15. Uh, you know, th then you are in shock. Um, the second time I had a huge bear market was in 2017. The top, of course, 20K, bam, back to 3K. Uh, yes, you are again a little bit in shock. But then you start to understand these drops are just part of the game. And we had the bottom now at 16K. Uh, it, it's looking to me as if this is a, a short-term bear market run like in 2019 from 3K to 14K and then back to 6K or something, which would mean in this moment now from um, like where we were 16K, maybe to 40K. I see a lot of, a lot of resistance at 33, 35. 4k and then we could pull back to 30k but um if you look at the bigger picture like i always say you need to zoom out in bitcoin look at the bigger picture it's very simple i don't believe that there will be people that is watching this video will ever be able to buy bitcoin below 20k again because in my opinion the bull market is already starting slowly and we will go into the halving in april 2024 and the bull market top will be in september august 2025 and up to 2024 april yeah we will be going up and down and up and down but if you look back in all the charts Around the halving, we have never been lower than the moment we are today. We have always been higher at the halving moment. So yes, we could go volatile, but at the end, we will go up a little bit by bit. And then I will take another year for the pool market top for me, in, in my honest opinion, to, to, uh, to reach again. And it will be, again, four years later. Um, I thought I saw a beautiful chart last time. Um, we should be buying Bitcoins six months uh, before the halving and selling it 18 months after the halving, there would be a stronger uh, trading position than um, just hodling. Uh, I'm kind of doing that always. You know, and every income I have every day, I'm just exchanging it to Bitcoin. I also have an alt altcoin portfolio, of course, um, you know, uh, but for me, clearly the bottom is in. For me, clearly we are in the reaccumulation phase at the moment. Uh, clearly we can see the wills and reaccumulating. Clearly we can see the institutional investors uh, uh, accumulating. So the retail investors should um, just ignore all the fat, ignore all the media, ignore all what they are saying. Just buy Bitcoin every day at the moment. Because even if we only go times four, 200K, it's your capital times four in one and a half year. Which bank, which investment fund is going to give you that? Which house is going to give you that? Which, which, whatever is which traditional give you that? stock is going to do that? You know? <laughs> Nothing. Nobody. Nothing. Yeah. Nobody. It's an ultimate moment to become um, a, a financial independent if that is the goal in your life. So with that, uh, Didi, I want you to pull, get your charts ready. While you're doing that, I'm just going to uh, talk here for a second. Uh, uh, well, you could pull, yeah, just pull up to get, just get, you could just pull up a Bitcoin chart. We could do it on the fly. That's fine. But, uh, um, everybody, if you're watching right now, we got 215 people watching live. We only have 89 likes. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, be involved in the crypto revolution. You really help the entire crypto ecosystem by when you watch any, whether it's my video, whether it's, uh, the Bitcoin family, Didi Taihutu's videos, Frankie Candles, BitBoy, it doesn't matter what crypto content you watch. When you like that content, it helps YouTube, which is now a part of the mainstream media. Think about how many billions of people use YouTube by liking this sort of content and lets crypt, it lets YouTube know uh, that this is, uh, basically you're voting on this content to be something, uh, that, that gets more eyes on it. So, and you're also helping out our community here. Uh, and I do want to just shout out over here, make sure you go and follow DD's uh, channel here at the Bitcoin family on YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash at the Bitcoin family. And you can follow him here on his Twitter, which is at DD Taihutu. And again, if you haven't yet, come over to the BitLab Academy Twitter, and uh, which is at Academy as uh, at Academy BitLab. Retweet this tweet. You're going to be entered to win some great stuff uh, with the with the BitLab Academy. And uh, as I've mentioned, I'm only here in Atlanta right now. You all know I live in New York. I'm here in Atlanta because you can see up here I have in this toolbar. This is launching while I'm here, and I'm leaving May 5th, so it's going to be some time before that. We've got all, I mean, we got everything from Bitcoin 101 to trading fundamentals to on-chain analysis to psychology of trading, candles, candle patterns, trading. Get involved with BitLab Academy, and if you get, if you get in there now, uh, you're also going to be able to uh, keep the, uh, you're going to basically keep that lower price for life. Now, enough shilling. I just want to share what it is that we do here. Uh, make sure you're following all these socials down here. Now, I'm throwing it back over to the main man, Mr. 
Didi Taihutu. Uh, yeah, let's let's look let's look at some charts. It's uh, what are you seeing? Let's look more locally, and then we can kind of zoom out. Um, let me see if I can share my screen over here because I don't think it's allowing me to share the screen. Something should be. I think I have it I'm set sure. open. But I'll zoom you're, to show you. As okay, I need to. Did you get it all set up? All righty. Yeah, so here, everybody, you can see, we've got, we're looking at the eight hour uh, right now. This is an eight hour chart. What, are, what was I looking at? Yeah, okay, let's go to the daily. So looking here at the daily, if we just go ahead and mute all of our drawings here, we can see a structure. Of course, we have this large push up, a uh, little bit of a bull flag, rolled over, got a little pullback. And remember this, this secondary pullback right here, we know now, this is something I want everybody to pay attention to. This is what scares people. And this is what, this is, this right here is called an emotional hijack. This emotionally hijacks people because they think it's going to crash again. And then what happens? You're donating, as I said before, you're donating your money to smarter traders so that they can buy that boat with that extra money they just made from somebody trading emotionally. And if we put, if we take off, if we unmute the, the lines here, we see that there was no reason to be scared here. Uh, I would even argue uh, if we had even broken this, but because we came down here and if we looked at this on a, let's look at it on an eight hour chart. Uh, where is it? Yeah. We could see right here coming into this, there's a loss of momentum coming into this with this candle closure, this next candle closure, much smaller, showing loss of momentum. In addition to that, on the BitLab trading stack, we can see this relative extrema was sticking out way far out of this wave. These bars, uh, zooming in here, we can see these bars are outside of this large, uh, healthy momentum wave, and we can see that coming into this area, we also knew we had this massive downtrend resist, uh, previous resistance already tested the support. So, and then we get the blue wave down here. So this gave us confidence. Now, where we're at right now, how do we attribute that to what we're looking at here? We see, we saw the push up. We had this sort of uh, stagnation here at twenty eight thousand dollars, butting our head, forming an ascending triangle here, uh, where we have essentially the flat top here with an ascending level of support. Now we broke through that. Okay. We not only broke through that, we had a clear level that we had marked out here live on the stream before uh, that this was a target. And on this target, uh, we're finding some resistance. So now that we do have a lower high, and technically we, we've pushed past this low, I won't call it a lower low really unless this uh, daily candle, uh, this is a six, eight hour candle, but if we have a, an actual uh, large time frame, a, a, a daily 12 hour, eight hour that actually closes lower, that's, that's what would make me really look at a uh, stronger possibility of downside now. As it stands right now, this looks a lot more to me, and I'll, I'll get Didi's take on this as well, but this looks a lot more to me like uh, essentially that emotional hijack. This is choppiness right now. We just saw some bullishness come out of uh, Gary Gensler being completely slammed to the pavement yesterday and not being able to answer. And Congress basically sticking up for Bitcoin and crypto uh, with the possibility of Gary Gensler getting pushed out of his position and a whole new uh, position to be created in, in, in that place. So this right now, as it stands... Even if we were to continue breaking lower, look, we have all these levels below us. We have this previous uh, level right below us with a high volume node, which is right here at about 28,400, 28,500, uh, 285 uh, more specifically. If we lose that, we still have this level here. And remember what I was discussing yesterday, everybody, that my, one of my favorite on-chain metrics to use uh, actively, not just uh, for macro, but also on a smaller time frame is looking at the short-term holder realized price. Short-term holder realized price, once we've broken above it, especially if we've tested it, has marked the start of every, like every bull run, and it's acted as support the entire way up. And that's all the way, I think right now, if I pull up my, uh, my metric here, uh, let me see, just getting this loaded. This is, uh, uh, Didi, I, I'll have to show this to you later. I, may, I have an on-chain metric that I created uh, that's over on Looknode that uses the realized price and uh, I use FIB so much in my trading. I did a Fibonacci multiples and uh, basically different Fibonacci multiples of the realized price to give different price bands uh, showing uh, generational buys all the way up to extreme overheated uh, zones. But we can see, look at this. This is right where we bounce on the short-term holder realized price. And as of two, two three days ago, 
We're, it's pushing up around 23,000, 23,400 probably now. So we could fall all the way to 23,400. And I, I still would not be thinking, oh, we're going to go to a lower low. I, if it was, if it was up to my determination of what my analysis says, I think that we may, if, if there is some consistent push down to the downside, may, if we break this high volume node right here at the $28,000 zone, may come down as low as uh, 26, uh, 26 to uh, 25 to 26 K region. That, that would be a strong buy for me. I think that this is just a little bit of a shakeout and we may get a little bit more consolidation here. Now, coming back over to Didi, do you, uh, did you get, okay, you got your chart set up. I was just talking I long think, enough to get your chart set up. Yeah, <laughs> I think I have a chart set up. I hope you can see this chart. This is a very yeah. simple chart. Um, I've been sharing this also for a couple of years. This is the Gaussian channel. Uh, this is a zoom out chart. So every candle is five days, guys. Um, and if you look in, in, in the full history of Bitcoin, um, the beautiful part you can see is that, um, there has only been like four or five times that we had the Gaussian channel flipping from green to red. And every time when we are red, that's of course the bear market. And at the end um, that this channel uh, ch changes green again, that's the start of the bull market. And the first time that we had this red channel was over here. It was 83 bars. So that's 415 days long that we were bearish below that red area on the left side. And um, the second time was 68 bars. It's after the 2017 bear market also, uh, 240 days sideways. But when we broke above it, that's that 2019 run, three to 19 uh, to 40 K. And then we had that COVID crash, which is, I think, an unnatural crash. I think if COVID would not have, not have happened or the fake flu show, I should call it, um, this crash would not have been there. Um, but at the moment, we can see that we have 77 bars, 385 days in red, and we broke above that Gaussian channel again. So if we look in history, we broke above that channel twice. And Every time we broke above it, it's a start of a massive bull run. Yes, we can retest that channel to show um, if we are like really strong. And of course, the top of the channel is exactly at the level that uh, Kelly just said. It's 25,155. So for a move to happen like, okay, pull back to the channel day and then go up again, definitely possible. That is how Bitcoin has been moving. It's also showing um, that you should be reaccumulating Bitcoin at the moment. Um, if you zoom out to the weekly, we can see exactly the same. Um, it's the first time in history that the 50 is crossing the 200 weekly moving average. We have never seen that in history. So the 300 weekly moving average became support. Before, we always had a 200 weekly moving average support, though, and we found the bottom. We are not going lower than a 300 weekly moving average. We're not going to go to 12K. Um, this green line will slowly turn up again, come bullish again. Um, I, I think if a retest of that 200 weekly moving average is in the picture, that's always what happens uh, when we break a certain level of resistance, we retest it. And also that level is exactly... Um, it's exactly, sorry for that, uh, at here 25K, 26K, uh, increasing every week. Now, um, talking about um, the picture that you shared with me before, um, I'm going to check if I can share that one as well. One second. I will stop this one. I'm going to share this screen because I'm also a huge fan of this one and the cost base of short-term and long-term hodlers. We can clearly see that in, the, in, the, in the whole history of Bitcoin, uh, you know, we only saw this moment over there, uh, which means that red line is crossing down on the blue line, which means the short-term holders are buying Bitcoin cheaper than the average price the long-term holders bought Bitcoin at. That's only a small part. But when they come above it again, the red line, that's the start of the bull run. That's a huge bull run. Here again, that bear market. After that, bull run. Here again, the bear market. The price is already moving above it. The, the lines are crossing at the moment. This is just a very simplified version of to understand you should be buying Bitcoin. Every time we go out of this purple cup at the bottom, you just buy Bitcoin and you enjoy that whole bull run. And another chart that I really like to share today maybe is this one over here. And for people to understand why my capital is all in Bitcoin. My capital is all in Bitcoin because of this. Um, it is very important to understand that we don't have an exponential growth like fiat that's growing because they are printing a shitload of it and more and more and more. This is what we call 
owns a sustainable uh, economy, <laughs> a sustainable economy. So, is so I'm going to I'm going to pause you there for a moment because yeah. one of the things one of the things that I the reason why we wanted to do this specific channel, the Lab Academy, is I think all of us forget how much the 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 the, the disparity, the difference between having knowledge about Bitcoin and crypto, and even even looking at a chart. Uh, you know, like you and I can look at a chart we've never seen and within about five minutes really grasp it. But there's there's an art to that. There's there it's, it's reading charts is like learning a new language. And once you start understanding how to break down charts, you start being able to understand what data and insights you can pull from it. So pull that chart back up and and uh, describe it to uh, in the most simple terms to to a 10 year old why that chart matters. Um, why this chart matters? It's 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 very important that people understand the difference between a logarithmic growth and an exponential growth. A logarithmic growth with a, a fixed cap of twenty one million bitcoins means that we can calculate from now till far in the future, the year two thousand one hundred and forty, when the last bitcoin will be mined, exactly how many bitcoins every day will come newly to the market. This is a very stable, sustainable way of creating a monetary system where we exactly know what the end result will be. In the other way, if you take an unsustainable uh, system like fiat currencies, where they just print out of thin air and we don't know where the top is, the top can be like like eight eight, eight thousand trillion dollar whatever printing of shitload of money. Um, we don't know where what, what kind of economy there is because. The more there is being printed, the more inflation there is being created, the more people have problems, uh, the more uh, eager an economy is to crash over and over again. And you get these cycles then of crashing economies. Why would we want that if we have a very clear sight of how many Bitcoins there will be in total, 21 million, how many Bitcoins will come uh, available every day for the new market to grasp. And, you know, we can fit all the capital worldwide in uh, in Bitcoins because it's built it's built like that. So uh, it's, it's important to understand that everything that goes up like this steeply, uh, that's all uh, creating inflation and making you poor. And everything that goes up like beautifully in a sustainable way um, is creating a very stable economy. And people could say it's fairly very volatile at the moment, but in the end it won't be. And then it will have been creating a very beautiful, decentralized, stable, sustainable economy um, that is also like probably completely running in a green way. So we don't need all that um, shitty um, discussions anymore about, you know, the environment because... I think the uh, fiat currencies are, are having a bigger um, impact on the environment than people even realize. You know, it's what's interesting to me is the fact that, you know, even right now we're talking about all the monetary policy stuff on a daily basis because of the lingering effects from not only COVID, but in reality, COVID was just an exacerbation of the bigger problem that's always been the case for fiat. And that is, you know, uh, sustained and 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 an ever pervasive uh, inflation over time. You know, uh, the U.S. dollar has lost ninety eight percent of its value uh, since the seventies. Uh, whereas you see the buying power of Bitcoin has only gone up exponentially in ten years. And because of this chart right here, it's proving the dynamics that is most important in any market, and that's understanding supply and demand. And the funny thing is, you know, if uh, I. Uh, is looking at this chart where you see the 5% per, uh, plus 5% per year or plus 20% per year. When we look at the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar, they're talking about right now how they're trying to get it back to 2% inflation. I can't remember a time that we had only had 2% inflation in the U.S. So what the hell are they talking about? It's complete gaslighting at its finest, uh, and it means nothing. The words of our government really means nothing. What's really interesting that I've that I found more and more by being in the crypto ecosystem is how much I've uh, you know uh, dove into uh, I've dived into how important data is and you know data helps you also uh, harness yourself harness your power back from the emotions that can as I was talking about in the charts earlier these markets eat people alive because most people trade emotionally but the funny thing is. Everybody, maybe not in the 90s, it probably was very difficult if you're a traditional asset investor to, you could find the data, but it was going to take a lot of work. But with, with Bitcoin and crypto and even with traditional assets now, but more so with blockchain protocols, 
you have the ability to have immediate transparency the second every block is printed and see what size wallets are holding what, when, where, what their behavior is, and you don't need a quarterly P&L report. You have sometimes up to the second P&L report, as well as maybe up to, up to 10 minutes for a Bitcoin block. But you get real-time data, and we don't need gaslighting and talking heads. Like, I'm a talking head here. You're a talking head on your show. But only th the only talking headness that we're really trying to do is to provide every one of you that's watching the awareness of the tools of the, uh, the tools and data available to you because it's all at your fingertips. And any bad trade you make, and I make them, Didi makes them, all of us, all of us have bought at the top and sold at the bottom of some asset. Uh, and some, you know, even within a, a smaller time frame trading, you might make a long and then the price goes the other way for, for 20 minutes and you're going, oh shit. But then, you know, it doesn't matter. Like if the more you dive into data, the less you need anybody else's input because the data gives you clarity and you can, you can rely on data. You cannot rely on a talking head. That's exactly what you're saying over there. For me, it's very important that I know exactly what my capital is. Um, you know, my capital is full Bitcoin, not like like 70%, 30% is like uh, altcoins and investments. But uh, my core capital isn't Bitcoin because I exactly know what is going to happen to my capital. The capital and um, I have full control on it, you know, and that's for me the most important part. And I think that people, I love trading, you know, trading for me is a, a huge part of the game. And I love the adrenaline. I love the, you know, the playful stuff that I'm doing. And if I'm losing, I'm winning. I don't even care because it's, for me, I only trade with the money that I can afford to lose. But um, the biggest picture is that I want to be in full control of my capital. I don't want situations where a bank um, SVB collapse and where people only get can claim 100k if they are insured and the rest is gone. Um, and then you know it's it's these situations that that we already had in the Netherlands in the 90s. The banks were already collapsing over there, and we were like, so no people can't get their money anymore. I, I hear people complaining they can only withdraw five hundred dollar a day. It's like mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you are the one that are putting is putting your capital in their hands, you know. Um, so for me, that's a bigger message, and it stays the message. Bitcoin is for me king, and when it comes to the monetary policy, all the other coins, I love to trade them. I love to support NFTs. I love to support ordinals. I love to support the whole industry because I think um, this industry can set a lot of people free um, in the future and instead of being running the hamster wheel, uh, making your own capital work, and by that, you know, live a beautiful life. Um, yeah, no, I mean, one of the, th I, I think I lost my track earlier, but I was bringing up this idea of cognitive dissonance. <laughs> and, you know, this goes back to what you're just saying now. You, you got me back on track, but it's very important. I think all of us, not only do we, you know, need to learn how to manage our emotions better and deal with data and, you know, uh, trade responsibly and with healthy risk management and only what you can afford to lose, understand your time horizon, all these things, yes. But we also all need to be, beacons of some sort of framework and some sort of knowledge that we can engage and talk with our family members, people on the street, whoever, when they ask about it, that we can answer it in a way that brings them closer to uh, closer to being involved with the crypto community rather than pushing people away. And one of the yeah. things that one of the things I think is important right now is uh, my mother brought up, uh, you know, when the FTX collapsed, she goes, you see, Kelly, that's why you can't trust Bitcoin. And I asked her, I asked her, uh, what was it about uh, two months later when uh, four major banks collapsed in the matter of about a week? I said, so are you getting out of the U.S. dollar yet? She goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you were saying I should get out of Bitcoin because something that's not involved with Bitcoin at all, which is just a centralized exchange. There is a bad actor within the space that, you know, it's like you have a bad used car salesman. Uh, say he does some t terrible crime. Do you stop driving because there was a car salesman that, that sold cars? No, yeah. but that's with Bitcoin. But on the flip side, when you have mass massive banking, uh, the industry seeing uh, uh, basically failures within the, their community, that's not really out of bad uh, or mismanagement out of the norm from the banking system, but these banks are collapsing, but somehow people aren't, you know, we saw some flight to Bitcoin, sure, there's a little pump there, but the, uh, the very frugal and traditional asset-minded person that's very opposed to Bitcoin, they're not seeing, they're seeing Bitcoin is bad because FTX collapsed, but they're not putting two and two together when you're seeing the banking system suffer failures. Therefore, fiat currency isn't bad. It's, 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 it's a very bizarre 
It's very, a very bizarre thing. Yeah. Also, what Gary Gensler yesterday was saying, you know, he, he was just trying to explain that the SVB bank collapsed because of cryptocurrency. I'm like, okay, so, uh, so it was not the banks that bought a shitload of bonds and lost a shitload of money because of that. And that's yeah. not why they this, you know, yeah. if there is no interest for the banks, how do they make money? You know, it's like negative interest. It has been negative interest, I think, for three years in Europe. You know, it's like people didn't even get money when they put it on the bank. Like uh, at the moment, banks are sending out letters in Germany, the ING Bank, one of the biggest ones. If people deposit 50,000 euro, they get 3% interest. They are asking people to please put money on the bank in Germany because else they will collapse as well. And when they collapse, all the banks uh, in Europe will collapse. So I put my bet not in banks, but in Bitcoin, be your own bank. And, you know, that's what it does. It, it makes you able to be your own bank in any kind of way. Store your capital, trade your capital, use the capital in decentralized ways to do to uh, as a collateral to get a loan to buy your house, whatever you want. You can do it with Bitcoin already. So yeah. uh, I don't see any way for people still being in shit coins like dollars and euros. It's like always this nice discussion when people attack me if I if I just talk about Ethereum or talk about any other beautiful uh, Cardano they're like oh you're a shitcoiner I'm like the only question I ask is do you have a bank account yes yeah yeah and you're like the biggest shitcoiner man this is the biggest shitcoin you can't even talk to me anymore you have a bank account that is the biggest shitcoin yeah. that is yeah. responsible for wars crimes everything else in the whole world doesn't have any tokenomics it's printed out of thin air and you trust. Your capital to that shitcoin, and you want to bomb something to a, a decentralized cryptocurrency that wants to try and improve a certain industry by decentralizing it. Yeah, it's like people just really don't understand anymore that, what a shitcoin is. So, with that being said, I did it again. Man, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to just I'm gonna have to self edit. Uh, you know, because you're you're so you're so involved in the crypto ecosystem, and of course, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, uh, I don't want to call it king. Everybody has a different trade. It, 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 it's, it's the largest market cap. It's, uh, it, is the thing, it, it is the thing that drove the crypto industry to where it is today that allowed for the crypto industry to explode how, how it has. It is the foundation for which the crypto industry is built on. We can see that just in the dominance alone. So having said that, <laughs> uh, are you? You don't need to say exactly what your alt holdings are in terms of specific coins, but going into the next bull run, what sort of things are you looking for in an alt portfolio? What sort of things would you recommend to somebody that's new? Not maybe not specific projects. You can name a few, of course, uh, if you like. But like, what what are you looking at in terms of go setting up into the next bull run? Uh, are there any coins that even right now maybe look like a setup? Maybe setting up for you? Maybe something like what's your what's your thoughts on the the altcoin uh, market right now? Um, I, I, it's a very simple thought. Um, you know, it's for me. I always diversify my alt portfolio in a, in, a, in a few groups, and one of the groups, of course, is uh, is layer ones. And layer ones um, have been existing for multiple years, and we know uh, what their all time high was. Uh, so, if you look to a lot of layer ones, uh, their previous all time high and the price where they are now, they could do all simple times seven, two times ten. You know, that's an easy calculation. You know, 100k will be 700k if you just invest in very secure layer ones that have been there for a long time Ethereum, Polkadot, Elrond, um, Near, Cadena, Hashgraph, all of these layer ones. I, I'm very positive on those. Of course, there's also all alts that I'm looking at, AI alts, of course, um, will be do, doing great, I think, in this um, in this next uh, bull run. I think DeFi alts, also a few. Uh, so, so I always diversify my, my whole portfolio, a little bit DEX, a little bit risky alts. So, yeah, it's um, it, I, I do think, to be very honest, for me, Bitcoin still is the king um, when it comes to replacing the monetary system. But if if you are in the industry to make a shitload of profit, uh, then I believe that the new bull on a Bitcoin top, the new top will be between 90K and 150K. I'm, I'm, I'm very reserved over there. I'm not going to shout 200K because that's really what I don't believe. So that's only times four or five the capital that you're putting in now. While if you would put it in, for example, um, a, a polka dot that is like almost 15 years, 15 times from their all time high, yeah, that would be a better investment if, if you want to make profit. So it's all about diversification of your portfolio. For me, 70% is Bitcoin, 30% is alt. Um, and, and yeah, that has been always doing really nice. And I always, I always keep that 
So when I make a shitload of profit, I always keep 70, 30, 70% 70 Bitcoin and 30% goes again into alt. So that's for me the, the most healthy um, portfolio and 0% goes into fiat. That is, I think, the most important part. Man, I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing some. I'm seeing some great comments in the chat. You know, uh, uh, L said that this guy is inspiring. Uh, you know, I mean, pe pe people, people really liking what you say. And, you, and I got to say, just uh, from another person that you know, you and I have uh, kind of been talking for a couple years online. I told you a funny. I was telling it for anybody watching. I was telling him a funny story earlier where, before we got started. I was talking to a guy at a at a, a festival club situ situation for 15 minutes because I thought it was Didi. Uh, I looked just like him, had a Bitcoin shirt on, and uh, I even was calling the guy DD. He didn't even correct me. And then I go online uh, to message him on Twitter, and I see a photo of him in Portugal the night before, and I'm like, well, who the hell was I talking to? But uh, the point being here is, uh, you know, you've, you've been a, a massive inspiration in the space for many people, and you are, you're doing, rather than talking about it, you are doing what you're talking about it. You're yeah. doing what it is you're, what you're selling. <laughs> But you're not selling anything. You're just living by example. And I, I just got to say, I respect that. And I appreciate you. But I think that's the most important part, Kelly, that we lead by example. I lead by example for my children to show them to not be a sheep, but be a person and uh, enjoy life. Um, and, you know, the thing that we are doing now, I, I'm not making that much YouTube content every day, a short video, but I don't have the time because the last two uh, years we've been filming with one of the biggest production companies of the world and the biggest streaming companies of the world. And we will film another half year. And next year, uh, just around the halving, there will be a beautiful documentary coming live about our family, what we have been doing, how we have been living bankless uh, on the biggest streaming platform of the world, showing people really what Bitcoin is completely about instead of just, um, you know, talking the talk, also walking the walk as a family. And I think when it comes out on that huge streaming platform, I can't say the name, um, then people will really understand that the Bitcoin is way more than just a tool uh, to accumulate wealth. And I hope that is the end that I can uh, make an end on that today because I really need to go into the next meeting later so I, i'm very sorry i only have that one hour and um, um, but um I, I, it was an honor to be here finally seeing you face to face hope to meet you somewhere on a beautiful beach drinking bacardi coke together because b is not only bitcoin it's beaches it's beautiful bacardi <laughs> cola it's butts it's big boobs it's everything the b is beautiful <laughs> <laughs> hey man i no, i gotta say i appreciate you coming on uh, give your family my best. Uh, make sure you get some sunshine on their shoulders. Get it on your face. I look forward to talking with you again. Everybody, uh, again, this is Didi Taihutu. Uh, Didi, I appreciate you coming on. We're going to continue on, everybody. I'll talk to you again, Didi. I'm going to I'm gonna give everybody all your contact, and uh, we'll see you again next time, my brother. Thank you so much for being here. So, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Now, everybody, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding that bell. Uh, we're going to be bringing on more uh, just absolutely wonderful guests on this show, as well as uh, doing a lot of TA and strategy and charts. Um, but you know what? We got we got a lot of uh, coins we want to go through today. So start throwing in some of the coins you want to you want to cover today. I'm going to try and hit as many as possible. Uh, we're going to look at the market, see what's going on right now. And if you have not yet, before, while you guys are getting in your coins, Make sure you come over here to, uh, let's see, to Didi's page. Make sure you give him a follow. It's at Didi Taihutu, which is D-I-D-I-T-A-I-H-U-T-T-U. Uh, that's his page here on Twitter, and this is his uh, YouTube page, at The Bitcoin Family. Great content there. Uh, but then, of course, remember, come over to the BitLab Academy page. Come down to today's post and yesterday's, if you, if you, if, if you did not uh, retweet yesterday's. Uh, where's it at? This one right here. Uh, make sure you're retweeting these daily posts because you get entered to win. Uh, we do the drawing on Fridays, so make sure you like BitLab Academy and retweet this, and we'll be doing that. Now, let's see what some of these coins are. All right, we're getting some coming in. Now, markets are going to be volatile. So the whole point of this channel, as I've said many times before, is not just to give you targets for coins. I'm not going to spoon feed you. I will, of course, do targets on the show. Absolutely. But the point of this is breaking down the strategy to get to those targets, to, to get to those targets. So throwing that rope back, bridging that gap from beginner to pro. And, you know, this is, a, this is a, of course, all free content that we put out here on the YouTube stream. Uh, but I do want to make sure that if you have not yet, come over to bitlabacademy.com. 
Uh, sign up for the e uh, newsletter here. I got a big newsletter coming out this week. We're updating uh, what's going on with uh, the launch, as well as uh, some charts on the market, as well as some uh, some other great content in here. This is a free newsletter. And even also, in addition to the, uh, uh, the BitLab Academy retweets, you also get another uh, chance to win uh, free access to the courses and indicators by just signing up to the newsletter. And again, we've got all this new stuff coming out, breaking down, I mean, everything from MACD to RSI to uh, Bollinger, all kind of stuff, candles, candle patterns, price action, psychology of trading, uh, trading fundamentals, trading technical analysis. Uh, so much is uh, on-chain data analysis. So much is in the, the new BitLab Academy, all new content filmed here in the new BitLab Academy studio. That's why I'm in Atlanta right now is to be here for while we launch. So you can rest assured it is happening. Uh, we're just tying up those loose ends. So now that I see we got uh, some some uh, we got some uh, some coins here in the chat. Uh, we've got uh, 281 people watching right now and only 176 like hit that like button right now. We're going to dive in to the charts. Now, what's going on? Let's first start with our, our zoomed out view just on a broader context of the market. Bitcoin dominance has looked like it, start, it, it kind of found a bottom here at this previous low, uh, which we can see. Uh, boom. Um, I don't think I have my my screen up all that time. Uh, but so long story, if I did not show you, uh, come over here to BitLab Academy. If the screen wasn't up, I don't know, because I have multiple screens here. Sign up. This is where you sign up for the newsletter. And this is the new BitLab Academy site with all the new content I was talking about. Now, uh, and this whole new course section, all the stuff. Now, coming over here, looking at the charts, we can see that, uh, yeah, I'm getting the dings in my ear that my chart's not up. I know. Uh, let's see. So looking at the dominance, we see Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is kind of finding a little bit of bottom here. And what we can see on this dominance, not Bitcoin finding a bottom, the dominance has sort of, we got this uh, basically hammer candle, which is an indication that this momentum to the downside has likely, uh, it's, it may likely at least an attempt uh, move back up. And we can also see this high volume node at this area. So this may, this may have a little bit of a, a push back up. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. But the whole point here is what we're doing before we start looking at price action is looking at the broader picture. Now, the next thing I want to look at is this right here. This is the uh, the market cap, the USDT market cap, the dominance of the stable coins. And we talked about this a lot on the stream. When the dominance of stable coins goes up, this is people moving out of positions in crypto, basically selling their Cardano or their Bitcoin or name any, name any coin in the crypto ecosystem. But this also means that these people are keeping their money, their capital within the crypto ecosystem rather than selling it to U.S. dollars and closing out. This is indicating that we can see here if we zoom out here, uh, boom, boom, boom. Let me go to auto. Okay, come on. Let me add this again, uh, BTC USD, here we go. Now we can see here, anytime the dominance goes up, this is the dominance right here of uh, USDT. This is marked by Bitcoin prices falling, okay? Now as this sort of kind of, you know, tapered a little bit, we also see the, 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 the momentum down tapered a little bit. Now we see when this reversed coming down, this is the dominance we see price action goes up. So what we're watching right now, we can turn off the bit, Bitcoin chart. What we're watching right now is we have this massive trend line of support that we have broken through. And we've talked about this a lot on the stream, but I have to reemphasize this. It's not just, it's not, we don't only want to see something break through for true confirmation of a move. We want to see something break through, move down as, as far as it does, and then come back up and retest this line and then get rejected again. This indicates uh, bullish or bearish pressures on this specific asset class. Or in this case, this is the dominance of USDT. You can do this for anything. Even if Bitcoin is setting up on support and is breaking down, then we can see we want to see it break down. We want the bullish attempt to come back higher and that bullish attempt to fail somewhere near this previous support, confirming it's now resistance, indicating that the bears are in control. And then you can have confidence in this move to the downside. So as it stands right now, 
Remember, this moving to the downside, coming up, oh, this is scary, it's coming up, but it shouldn't be scary yet because this coming up indicates Bitcoin may be coming down. However, it's finding, look at this, zooming in here. Let's zoom in here really big. Look at this wick here. This attempted to come all the way past the line of previous support, now resistance, and is getting rejected down. This is on the daily. Let's look at the four hour. Look at that. Even on the four hour, it couldn't close a four hour above this. So let's go down to the one hour. So even the one hour could not close above this. This is a clear, at this point, it's a clear rejection, but we want to see how, how much further this comes down. Uh, we didn't even get a 24 minute, 15 minute. Oh man. Five, not even a five minute. So this was a very strong, basically bullish sort of manipulation of the USDT dominance, uh, only to get rejected. So this is uh, bull, this is part of a this is bullish to me for Bitcoin price action and the crypto markets. Now looking over here at the the this is the total two, which is uh, everything in the crypto market minus Bitcoin. We can see that this did break out, uh, and same thing. This is no different than the USDT dominance. This is any. Any chart you look at ever, when you break a key resistance, which we had right here, we broke above that. What we want to see is some reversal and a reattempt by the bears, some profit taking at this level, and then uh, the, the, the bears not being able to reclaim this with closures be uh, below this previous resistance. And by not being able to close below this and bouncing off, we are confirming this as support and essentially giving credence to a bullish move to continue because the bears don't have enough power to take it further down. So now that we've seen these two key charts, let's go ahead and dive into, uh, let's go ahead and dive into the markets. Now, everybody with me, if you're sitting at your chair all day, you got to stretch your back. Sometimes you got to move around. I'm feeling a little bit better today. I don't, uh, you know, I did the uh, pre-record yesterday cause I had an appointment and then I had to go to urgent care yesterday, which wasn't like an emergency room, but, uh, I'm in Atlanta, so I had to go to, I don't have my doctor here. I had to go, my ankle, my ankle was just locked up. Uh, my body was just feeling super sore because I'm sitting at these charts all day. So I want us all to take better care of ourselves, stretch, move your body, get a sip of water. It's like a big old baby bottle. Now, we're going to look at these markets. Now, first thing, we're looking at the, the daily. Now, looking at the daily, uh, we can see we had this large overheated zone. We had this large overheated zone right in this region. Why do I say overheated? I'm going to take my face off the chart so you can see the entire chart. This is all part of the BitLab trading stack, uh, which you can find over here at bitlabacademy.com. Come over here to indicators. Uh, you can also use BitLab15 uh, in the uh, have a coupon area uh, when you add this to your cart. Uh, you get for uh, an additional 15% off. Now, this trading stack which is the market intelligence which does the ema ribbons the uh reads all you know 10 different divergences money flow balance on balance volume macd rsi stochastics uh check and money flow uh all these things and then we have the hidden volume the relative extrema and the significant movement the significant movement is a group it's an aggregate look with some algorithmic sort of uh calculations on a variety of different uh important uh, essentially momentum indicators like stochastics, RSI, uh, uh, just movement health. And when you can identify likely uh, undervalued, uh, oversold areas, which would be a likely floor. And uh, when, you're, when your values are overbought or AKA overheated is when you get this red. Now, when you get a strong move, especially like on the three day, uh, on the daily, we can see we can be in this red for some time. So what does this indicate? What we want to do with any indicator package, even if you're using a bunch of free indicators here on TradingView like uh, RSI, MACD, uh, Stochastics, even within this, we want to get, a, get you know an agreement between multiple different indicators to see the move. Now, even I'm just looking at this right now. I haven't looked at the traditional these traditional free indicators in a while. We could have sort of uh, projected a likely pullback here because we had a uh, pretty large... Uh, uh, we had a divergence starting to form all the way back from April 10th uh, here on the daily. Same thing on RSI. The uh, MACD was rolling over right here, and we're getting candle patterns 
meaning that we look at this right here, this shooting star sort of candle right here, almost a do doji. Then we get the doji. We got a, a spinning top and then a doji. This was a clear reversal pattern uh, followed by bearish divergence on stochastics and RSI. And we saw the momentum uh, on the MACD, the uh, moving average convergence divergence, starting to round over here. How do we know it's starting to round? Because we had dark green that flipped to light green. This histogram, the only thing this histogram does, for anybody that doesn't know, all this is, is a measurement of distance between these two lines. So you can look at either one of these. Looking at just a histogram, uh, you can completely ignore the lines if you want and just look at the histogram. You can see when this is red, when this flips to a lighter uh, pink, this means this is uh, red as this is expanding. Lighter pink means this is contracting. So we can see that this momentum was starting to wane right when this flipped, when this started to round over. And uh, so that, which was right here, Leading up, following the bearish divergence on stochastics, this indicated a likely pullback was in the cards. So if somebody was scalp trading and wanted to take a trade off of this, you could have seen that by utilizing multi one, two, three, four points of confluence, four data points on your chart. Now coming over here to the BitLab trading stack again, we can use, what I like about this is the, the significant movement alone has, I think, uh, three or four different indicators that are grouped in with this. So you're already getting, you know, three or four points right here. And then you're getting within the relative extrema, you're seeing the health of the move within the move. So on this candle, how healthy is this candle within the move? Well, we see this, we see this, uh, this bar sticking slightly out of this, uh, this aggregate momentum wave, this cloud. And this means that this is likely uh, an overextended move and may have some consolidation. What immediately follows that consolidation. Now, what I want to point out here is that we did get two bearish divergences right here with the MACD and the RSI that we also saw pulling up those other indicators. But you can see with this BitLab trading stack, it just shows you that you have two bearish divergences right at this point. You can see this candle also indicates some weakness at the, the bullish momentum at this level. We see that we're overheated on the momentum with this red wave and now on the daily, let's kind of, let's kind of take this down a little bit. Let's look at the 12 hour. Now we can see Right here, we had the two uh, bearish divergences. We had a high print behind here. You can't really see because it's under the thing. But this is very overheated still. If we come down to the four hour, let's see if we can see a clear signal. So we had uh, uh, so we had five, four bearish divergences right here, the MACD histogram, the RSI, stochastics, and money flow. So if we're on the daily and we're wondering where to pull the trigger, then we, you know, we're starting to see like something form here and we're worried, is this going to break up or down? You come over here to the four hour, divide your time down, get better resolution. We see at, this is that candle that we were seeing those divergences on. This is it broken down on multiple candles now because we're on a smaller time frame. Four bearish divergences. This right here was signaling that this was likely going to top out because we had the movement was unhealthy coming, coming up to this. So this was already unhealthy coming up to this. We're getting weakness just above this previous sort of uh, resistance and we're getting weakness here at, while this is also overheated this is flashing back to overheated so this was a this was a clear signal between one two three four of this likely coming down so where we're at right now what I want to point out is on the daily we can see this came down this was healthy but this attempt back to the upside Still very healthy. We can see these bars within this momentum cloud. This momentum cloud is coming down. And what I want you to notice is once we got into this very bullish movement, once we got into this very bullish movement, uh, strong push here, once we got into this very bullish movement, this momentum wave, even on pullbacks, has stayed above the zero line. So even right here where it pulled back, this momentum wave has stayed above the zero line. And these bars indicated this likely was going to bounce to the upside. And then we also got the bullish divergence. So we see these slingshots sort of uh, pulling down. We see these bars, you know, poking down. It's kind of like a slingshot pulling down to push uh, likely push price higher. Uh, and it's right on support as well. So we got that. Now, what I want, the reason why I'm laying all that out is because looking at where we're at right now, this price action pullback, we are starting to get on this pullback. We haven't even broken really below this low. We're just below it if we are. We're getting a bar on the opposite side here. So this is showing an unhealthy attempt to almost like, I don't want to call it a manipulation, but a market mover push, an institutional push 
trying to get price action to go lower. This is unhealthy movement that's not supported by the momentum and the, the selling pressure for likely continuation. Now, we could get multiple bars, meaning we could still have further down to go, but we're starting to see weakness here. I'd like to see on the daily this flip to gray. Let's kind of go down. Let's trickle down. This is already gray on the 12-hour. Now, seeing this with clearer resolution, all of this. Look at this. All these bars sticking out to the downside are showing that every attempt to the downside is there's a lot of underlying bullish uh, pressure here. And we may, we can kind of come in here to the four hour, we may be forming, if this is able to bounce at this level, we may be forming a, a double here uh, to a W uh, pattern uh, to continue to the upside. Now, which way do I think it's going to go? I think uh, if we do go further, it would be, Something that would be probably hold at this level, 28.4. Uh, yeah, 28.4 level. But it's looking like this is making an attempt. If we, if we, can, if we can get back up to 30,300 30, and not just get rejected, I'd like to obviously reclaim this 29.850 first. But if we're able to claim that, then I think we are going to retest this. And if we're able to break this, then I think we will be going higher. Uh, if we do lose this level right here, if this is just a, essentially a stair step down like this, then I'd like to see this level hold. If this level doesn't hold, which is the uh, 28.5, then I'm going to stair step it down to the next low, uh, which would be uh, which would be you know, kind of in this entire region, 28, 28. 28,000 up to 28,500. This region, if this region doesn't hold, then coming down another thousand to 27,000, still be very bullish. Uh, and we would reassess. And we could see on the two hour or one hour getting a lot, large blue wave. Now, this is what I'm seeing for Bitcoin. Let's go through these other coins. Now, let's go ahead and uh, let's go to Cardano first. We'll do the, the larger coins first. Now, what is this that we're seeing? Well, looking here on the four hour, we have this large, we have this large uh, channel that we've been in for some time now, essentially from this first bounce over, this has been uh, 37 days we've been in this channel. So look at this, previous high, price comes down, bounces right at this previous high. Hold on, there we go. Look at this, bounces right at this previous high. Also uh, the 1.382 uh, on this retracement to the downside. So if, if this strong bullishness comes in, and we're seeing the blue wave, the blue wave flash is flashing now, and we're getting five bullish divergences here. So the question is on this specific move, option F gives us a Fibonacci. If you're on PC, it's alt F. Uh, question here is, this is a fib from the breakdown, this point to this low, is are we able to, if, is, if, if Cardano is able to come back up and take out this this low, which is also perfectly in line with the golden pocket retrace of this move. If we push up with some attempt here and get rejected here, then I'm looking at this level right here. This The next level down is 40, 40 cents, 40.4 40. cents. If we lose this, then, uh, then I'm looking likely at probably, probably this level here. It could be just this high. The reason I'm doing this level just below that is because this is kind of regionally, it'd probably be more appropriate to do a box here like this. This would be a strong buy zone for me if Cardano were to lose this level uh, down here at 37, basically 38 cents down to 37.5 uh, because this is previous lows. This is previous tops. We have support, 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 okay? So if this does lose this, this is an area that I'd be doing strong, strong buying but that's only if we lose this level. It's looking like uh, we may consolidate a little bit from here, uh, you know, find a little bit of legs, and then uh, maybe maybe a small accumulation here, but then uh, push uh, continue push to the upside. I'm not going to do a target much higher than that. I want I want it to take out 43.4, 43.5 area, and then we our next target would be 40, 44.8, and then the next target would be 48 cents. This is going to be the breakout point. When we're able to take out this 48 cent level, uh, and we can also zoom out a little bit. Let me double click on the chart, minimize those other indicators. Uh, if this were to this were to be further out, uh, for instance, if this is you know slow, slowly working its way up, this could be 48.6, 48.7. So basically, this box right here is going to be when uh, the is going to be when there's going to be some really strong. Uh, come here, work with me, baby. 
It's going to be some really strong, uh, I'm going to do this uh, gold. Really strong uh, price action if we're able to get above one, break this level. Okay, then of course the next tier is 45.8, uh, but 45 to, 45 to 46 cents. This is just the, the levels to go up. But once we break this channel, then we can see this is the next, the next move up from there is option J is 52 cents. So breaking this, 52 cents. The next move up from there, hold on, let's, let's go on a larger time frame. Auto. We've got a few too many things going on right now. So, okay, so if this were to break out of this, this zone right here, this is going to have one, this key level all the way through here. Look at all this uh, support, resistance, resistance, resistance. If we're able to break this level, I think we very clearly are going to get up to the 48, 49 cent level. If we're able to take this, I don't think this high is going to be as important as all of this, this level right here. If we're able to take this, I think the next level up is going to be the 58 cent mark. Uh, 58 cent mark. And then. I mean, the move from there is, you know, I mean, essentially uh, up to the 79 cent mark, which is the next low. Um, so we've got, we've got some big movement ahead of us right now. There's one thing to caution you on, though. Ascending channels like this tend to be bearish. So if we do have some strong bullish momentum coming to the market, we can negate that because this will sort of follow the leader if we're getting strong news from xrp if we're getting strong uh you know if uh, gary gensler's uh, replaced and you know they have you know some you know they kind of they dismiss some of the the frivolous sort of lawsuits he's placed against uh you know bitrex and you know this speculation on algorand being a security if, you know if that sort of thing we're gonna see markets just rip and uh nullify this potential bear structure but we can also see this is also on cardano this is also something that we like to see a bit of a w pattern but we can also see, we can also see here. There's also a kind of a, a bit. I didn't notice this until now. A bit of a head and shoulders here. Uh, so we've got this. This neckline is essentially the the zone. We tried to basically false break out above it. Now, if we're able to break above this, then you know we, now we can take our measurement from here to to the bottom of this uh, head. Now take this projection up. Now what target is this? Look, I did not, I promise I did not do this before the stream. Look at what this target is. This is where I was saying it could likely go if we're able to break this structure. This lines perfectly up with previous support. This is why I don't care how much you might think this is snake oil when you're like TA doesn't matter. It gives you at least a framework for which you can work with and you don't, it's not going to play out exact every time, but it gives you a roadmap and you don't take this trade and then have a sell order right at the exact point. You 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 can take some off the table here. Take some off the table uh, at at this level here. This other previous high. You can some take some profits off as you go and move your stop loss up, and then at this level reassess. You know there's probably going to be a little bit of a rejection here. So on this retest of of this previous high, then you have a lot more capital to redeploy into uh, the asset and to take hot. A, a high, higher percentage, a, a larger capital advantage to gain more, per, you get more percentage on higher cap, capital, right? Or the percentages uh, matter more because you have more capital is what I meant to say. So that's what we want to do. Now, coming over, let's kind of back out here. Let's look at XRP. I got XRP. Let's uh, go to the 12 hour, see what we're looking at here. Okay, so we uh, kind of almost made it up to the 0.5 fib. Now, this doesn't look like it's all the way to the bottom. There we go. We almost made it up to the 0.5 fib. Did not quite make it there, but we're right at this key level. We're right at this key level. Previous support, previous support, uh, previous rejection, and we're fighting just below this. So moving, moving, breaking, breaking this level. Uh, I think we, I think we'll, I think we'll get a pretty strong move once we do, uh, and come up here and test uh, set the 70 cents area next, and then uh, 93 cents after that. Uh, it's all going to depend on if we, if we're going to get through this, uh, higher volume. Let me see what the volume looks like here. There's, there's kind of a volume node around that seven, eight, six. So when this starts moving up, 
the key point is going to be is if we can break if we can break uh, the 93 cents, I think obviously there's going to be some really positive news. So I think at that point, uh, XRP is going to be a rocket ship and move to the upside. Now, on the other hand, looking at this coming down to the four hour, let's go ahead and look. All right, let me go back to the daily. 12 hour, thought I saw something. So we're getting bullish divergences. Look at this, bullish divergences on volume. Uh, so there's a sort of po positive narrative here. This was red in this region showing overheated, but it's flipped blue here, okay? So now coming down to the four hour, getting better resolution, blue here, bounce. Blue here, bounce. Blue here, bounce. This isn't always going to play out, but it, d it helps you. All these tools help you uh, drive prob high probabilistic uh, decision-making in trading. Now, we can see here that this, uh, we're on the four hour, let's come down to the two hour. So we saw the relative extremist ticking out, flipped blue right after, and we're getting a push up. What we wanna make sure here though, on the smaller time frame, is if we look at this uh, golden pocket here, if this gets rejected here, then we're likely going lower. I don't mean if it gets a small, you know, frustrating sort of consolidation, that's fine. But if we get, if we get here and you know, have one candle, two candles, and then rejection down, then uh, if we don't hold the, this 48 cent, 48.8, uh, then I, I think we may be going lower. Uh, but we, we can go all the way. I mean, we realistically can come all the way down to 43 and still be completely okay within the structure of, uh, you know, price action movement from this low to this high. The golden pocket is this 43 cent level. Now, what does this mean? And have you hit the like button yet? Have you hit the subscribe button? Have you ding the bell? We got a couple more charts that we're going to be doing here. Uh, I think uh, with all the news going around with the uh, SEC, uh, with Gary Gensler, with, uh, you know, I think I'm feeling, this is just a spidey sense. I'm feeling like there's going to be some big news that's going to come out. And the markets are likely going to move. Am I going all in on everything and not managing my risk? Absolutely not. I have my strategy in place. I'm picking my targets and I'm practicing risk on every trade that I make. Uh, uh, so I can take advantage of the market and not let the market take advantage of me because I just think something doesn't mean it's going to happen. And even if I see a highly probable setup, doesn't mean it's going to happen either. So even with a highly probable setup, I'm still managing my risk, but we are fighting at this level. We're fighting at this, uh, this sort of level. If we're able to take this level, uh, you know, this is a ma major downtrend resistance and it looks like, it looks like as it, as it is, we're kind of in this zone. If we're able to break above this, I think we are going to get up to this 70, 70 cents and then test the 93 cent level. This is something I would like to see. Let's see if it plays out. If we do reject down from here, uh, we could go honestly as low as 35 cents and it's still, we'd still, I'd like to hold above that. So let's say the seven, eight, six retracement, 39 cents. Uh, and we'd still be uh, in a bullish structure. So as it stands right now, I'm leaning a little more bullish. If we do get price action to the downside, we have our levels. Previous action highs, uh, we can look at these, and that's what we can mark out. Now, uh, let's see, uh, Avalanche. I saw some people type in Avalanche. So looking here, let's go to the daily. Avalanche, everybody, uh, there's a big, I forget what it's called. Not a, is it a conference? There's a big, uh, they, they have a big uh, AVAX conference or something, uh, in a in a, a couple of weeks, uh, and there's speculation there's going to be some announcements there. This also has a massive inverse head and shoulders, as we can see right here. The target out of that is all the way up here at forty three dollars. We're currently at nineteen eighty uh, nineteen dollars and eighty cents. I actually uh, uh, reaccumulated some uh, about a week ago on Avax. My throat's dry here today, man. So what we can see here is we're getting the bullish divergence, but this is also looking overheated, and these look like they're kind of poking out just a little bit, and we're getting some bearish divs. As expected, we're at the neckline. So coming down to a smaller time frame, we get that better resolution. We're getting the same thing that we saw in the other alts. We're getting rejection. They're all playing out fairly similarly, but one of the things that I'm also seeing here, I hope this does not play out this way, I'm also seeing that we kind of have a broadening wedge here, uh, which potentially, uh, I already had it drawn, it looks like, uh, which potentially could be bearish. Uh, technically, we've already broken below it. If this rejects here, we may have uh, we may have some downside uh, to go uh, on this move. Uh, option F, Fibonacci from the bottom to the top. Now look at this rejection. Where to go? Came tapped right into and just past the golden pocket. 
came back up. If this gets rejected, not only at this line, this is also the 382 uh, retracement fib. If this gets rejected here, then and we're not able to hold the 1885, 1887 zone, then I think that uh, we're probably coming down to this zone down here to 1733. If this does break back through this and test back up to this, I already showed you where the target was on this. But what we can do is come from here, option F, uh, bottom to top to bottom, and dragging this down. If you double click on your fib, uh, you can come down here. You can turn on your colors. Turn on your. You can turn on your colors or turn them uh, invisible like mine, just so it's clean on the chart. And you can add your 1.618, your 1.382, uh, and you can see this is an extension. So if this does break to the upside, am I am I just planning on it going straight to uh, 42? And look at this. The 42 is also right at the 3.618. So I'm not planning on it going there, but I have a roadmap that I can take some profits. Uh, or if this gets rejected here and it pulls back, I have a target uh, for a bounce area, not even looking at previous price action. I guarantee there's some confluence there. But if this breaks out of here, I'm looking at going up to the 24.87 and then 26.73. Now, with that being said, uh, last chart I'll do, I'll do ICP. I saw some people asking for ICP. I've been spot, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been eyeballing, I've been eyeballing some ICP. So now, uh, let's go to 12 hour. Okay. Now option J option J now option J gives you the, uh, the, what do you call it? The horizontal ray. And I'm going to have to go here in a second because I have to do the, I'm doing some TA on the Bitboy crypto here in a little bit. Look at this breakdown finding resi re uh, resistance at this golden pocket. If ICP uh, gets rejected here, I, uh, uh, I'm i thinking this level right here, option J, uh, this sort of zone between uh, $5.70 up to $5.90, because this is a 382, which is a previous high right here, and this is a previous high. So in this zone right here would be a, a good dip buying opportunity, not financial advice. This is just strategy. Uh, this zone right here, uh, if this does bounce here or just uh, finds support, you know, here in this region, which you see right here, we're, we're kind of finding support on this previous high. If we bounce up from here, then the, the next target up uh, I would see is, uh, you know, I'd like it to get up to this previous high at $8 and 20 cents. If we're able to break that, then the next line up is previous price action as well as a 1.382, uh, uh, which is nine. They confused me because it said 9.618 uh, would be $9 and 61 cents. Next uh, ultimate target from this particular move extension will be $10.44. But everybody, I love you. Hit that like button. Hit that, uh, sorry. Everybody hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Ding that bell. Let me know you like what's going on in this channel. My name's Kelly Kellum, and this has been your first time. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you go over to the BitLab Academy page. Retweet this tweet. Let it share it out to your people. Get people to know how they can learn about crypto. Uh, have them join our community. Share this. You get entered to win. Uh, I draw on Friday. So even if you're watching this later on, you can retweet this. Comment below your thoughts and uh, thoughts, questions, feelings, sticking points, whatever, like what you're looking at right now on the charts. What's your next DCA going to be? What's uh, what's your uh, what's your target here at the end of Q Q2? Let me know what you're thinking. I want to see what you guys are thinking so I can help tailor content to you with that. Uh, big love to all of you. Uh, if you have not yet, uh, make sure also, if you haven't, where is it at? Boom. If you haven't, make sure you come over, follow me here at Kelly Kellum. And with that, I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you over. I'm going to be on BitBoy Crypto doing some TA. So big love. Adios, muchachos. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Like, subscribe, and tune in. Adios, muchachos. Thank you for coming. Watch these videos again and again. Hit that like button, sucker.